All right, so what we're going to talk about now is going to be uh, how to make a underquilt. Uh, this is going to be like a, a torso length, a three-quarter length uh, underquilt for the DIY bridge hammock that we made in this series. Um, so let's get started. All right, so you can see I've got my uh, nylon laid out here. And I'm using the, uh, the template I made for the bridge hammock to lay out my design for the quilt. Um, so that comes really in handy for that. Uh, now the quilt we're making is 54 inches long. Um, so what I did is I measured, let's see here, I measured 54 inches from that end straight down to this line. And that's 50, uh, that's 54 actually plus 2 inches for an inch seam allowance on each side. Uh, so that's given me a length of 56 inches, which I've got my fabric lined up to. And all I'm going to do now is just uh, trace around that and cut it out. So I'll check back with you guys after I've done that. Okay, so we cut out our first piece of fabric to the same size uh, of our uh, template here. Okay, so now for the second piece, the outside shell, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lay our fabric back out again um, with the template on it. And so what I've done is I marked on the fabric where the template ends, and I did that on all four corners. So there, 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 and there. And our outside shell needs to be 10 inches total uh, wider than our inner shell. Okay, so we're going to go now and measure. We're going to measure from this point five inches out on all those four corners again. And that's going to give us the same shape, but it's going to uh, make it 10 inches wider total. And then we'll simply slide our template over and trace along this curved edge to make sure we get the same shape, um, just lining up those points that are five inches out on each side. Okay? So I'm going to do that and cut this out. Okay, so like I talked about, uh, we've got our mark here. And I'm simply just going to measure over five inches, make my mark again. And I'll do that on all four corners uh, before we check back in. All right, you can see now that I have the uh, outer shell traced, again, this is the same shape, only 10 inches wider, and we used our template to get to that shape very easily. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead, cut this out, and we'll check back in. All right, so now what we need to do is to mark out our, uh, our baffles and where they're gonna be spaced. Now this is the outer shell, or the one that's gonna be on the bottom, and that's gonna be the one that has the volume to it, okay? So the uh, baffle width markings on this side on the outer shell need to be seven inches. Now we're doing six baffles, okay, so seven times six is 42 inches. Uh, the narrowest part of this, I believe, should be approximately 44, okay. So right about there is my, my 44 inches. Um, so like I said, 42 inches, we have uh, about an inch seam allowance on uh, either side. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to mark in then uh, at one inch. And then we'll mark seven inches until we have six baffles. So we got our baffles marked, and now what we need to do is uh, follow the ripstop pattern now with each one of these markings straight across uh, the lengthwise uh, so we can mark out um, where we're actually going to sew. Now it's important to note that we have uh, the shiny side facing out, and this is the dull side that we're marking on. We want the side with shininess to be on the outside. Okay? so. Uh, I'm going to just draw this out now and I'll check back with you. Alright, so you can see I have 
taken those points that I marked and I have followed the ripstop pattern and drawn out the lines for my baffles all the way down the underquilt uh, on the outer shell. The next step is to repeat the process, but this time on the inner shell. All right, and uh, for the inner shell, instead of seven inches, it's going to be 5.5 inches. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. Instead of seven inches, five inches. I'll check back with you when that uh, tedious work is done. All right, so I have got the inner shell now uh, completely marked. Um, and so I just wanted to show you what we're going to do next. All right, so what I've done, as you can see, this very last uh, baffle mark, I flipped the fabric over and I marked on that side as well. Okay, and the reason being for that one is that uh, this last baffle mark is actually not going to be a baffle. It's going to be sewn together, okay, because that's the edge of our quilt. So uh, it's kind of hard to do that from the inside, so I'm just uh, marking that edge now on the outside, and I'm going to go ahead and trace that on the outside as well. Um, I don't want to see it as much, so I'm probably going to use uh, black for that um, as I trace along everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'll do that on both sides, and on both, uh, both the inside shell and the outside shell, and on the left and right side. Okay? Sorry for the... Uh, lack of me in this video, but so far it's been nothing really much uh, except for uh, just marking and drawing lines on fabric. So I'll check back after I mark these lines and uh, hopefully we'll get to sewing soon. All right, so the next step is to cut our baffles. So I've got no seam netting here that I'm gonna use for my baffle material. And if you remember, our underquilt is 54 inches long. We did cut the material before to 56 inches, but that was for uh, seam allowance. So for our baffles, we're going to cut these to 54 inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark on the fabric 54 inches. I'll do the same from the other side and we'll draw a line across. All right, so we've got our fabric now. We've got our no seam, oops, our no seam cut to size for our baffles, the 54 inch length. Now what we're gonna do, it's kind of a little cheat here. It's simply gonna be to, to roll this. The hardest part is getting it started. There we go. Not sure why that was so difficult for me. All right, so this side, is a little neater, so I'm gonna measure from this side. But now that we've got it rolled, all we need to do is to mark off our, our baffles. And so we have a two inch baffle height, and so um, we need to give ourselves about two and a half inches of material, um, because you gotta remember there's gonna be about a quarter inch or so that's taken up when we actually sew it to the hammock, or excuse me, sew it to the, uh, the shell for the underquilt. So I'm first gonna give myself a nice clean edge just by marking at one inch. Okay, so now two and a half inches will bring us to three and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and cut there. It's gonna to help to have some really sharp scissors for this. Um, another thing you could do is order these directly from Dutch, uh, who sells um, baffles um, pre-cut to your size, which is really nice. Um, but anyways, you can see that now we've got a long two and a half inch baffle at 54 inches. I'm going to continue doing that. We need five of these, actually, for the six baffles that we're making. We need five baffles. So again, from here, two and a half inches. and we'll cut. There's another. And again, like I said, we'll keep doing this until we have five of them. So I need to do three more. And I'll check back with you guys when I'm done with that. 
Alrighty, so I've got my inside and outside shells done. I'm going to simply figure out which one, which one is which, and then I'm going to line up the edges with the insides facing each other. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do now is just right along the edge, I'm just going to want to sew these together, and that's just going to give me some stability um, when I'm doing everything else. Okay, so I'm just going to go along the, uh, the right hand side here and sew it all together. Right, so we've got the uh, right edge sewn together. And now all I want to do is that black line that we drew on the outside of the shells. Um, I'm going to sew that together right now. Okay. So make sure your fabric's nice and taut and all lined up. And then go ahead and just do a straight stitch right down that black line. So, here's the part where the uh, underquilt really starts to uh, come into its own and kind of morph into an actual underquilt. Um, I've got the two pieces sewn together, those two lines of stitching that we did. And now if I kind of flip it open and I show you the inside, we've got our marks right here and right here on the uh, inside and outside of the, or the uh, bottom and top, if you want to think about it that way, shells. Um, and I'm going to go ahead now and take my baffle material and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it to one side first and then sew it to the other side. Okay? And then after we do one on both sides, we'll move on to the next line and do another one. And we'll continue that process um, until we're done. And we've got five of them to do. Okay? So I'm just going to start on the right hand side here. Remember we've allowed ourselves a quarter inch of material to sew to. So just keep that in mind when you're sewing. Oh, another thing to uh, mention, excuse me, is we need to actually mark one inch down for where we start the baffle. Um, because remember, we've allowed uh, an inch on both sides for seam allowance. Okay? So we need to actually get our marker. All right, so what we need to do is grab our marker and our tape measure. And we're just gonna measure an inch down as our starting. All right, so uh, as you can see, we have got our baffle material attached to one side. Now we're simply just gonna go ahead and line that up to the other side on our first line and we're just gonna stitch right along there. All right, so I, uh, I finished um, sewing all of the baffles in, um, just like I showed you guys earlier. Um, so they're all sewed in and then now all I'm doing is on the opposite side uh, from where we started, I'm just uh, sewing the two edges together, just like we, how we started. Um, just right along the edge uh, and uh, when I'm done doing this, I'm going to go ahead and sew along that black line on the other side from where we started. Um, and we'll have pretty much almost a finished undercurl at that point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Alright, so I thought I'd just show you guys uh, the last little part here. You can see that this is the side we just finished sewing together. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there's my black line just really faint right here. And I'm just going to make sure that I keep this nice and flat and taut, and I'm just going to sew a straight stitch right along that, which is going to be the last uh, finished part of my baffle. All right, so we have our shell of our underquilt now uh, pretty much complete. All I have to do now is uh, go on the edges, the left and right side, and um, I'm going to do a rolled hem just to finish the edge. And given the nature of the design of the underquilt having uh, an arc in it, 
I'm gonna choose to, as I do the rolled hem, I'm going to fold it once, so only half of the rolled hem, do a line of stitching, and then after that, I'll fold it one last time to give it a full rolled hem and do my last and final row of stitching that way. Um, I find that when I have arcs or um, kind of bad cutting or regular shapes that I have to do a rolled hem on, it's a lot easier to do it in this two-step process versus trying to um, roll it completely and then stitch it. So that's what I'm gonna do here on both sides. And uh, then I'll check back with you guys. Okay, so we've come a long way. Um, our underquilt shell is pretty much done now. Uh, I've done the rolled hem on both sides. Um, now what we need to do is uh, pick a side to stuff it from and pick a side to close off. Um, I'm gonna close off, while this is unstuffed, the long side, just because once it's stuffed, it becomes a little bit harder to handle, and I figure having a, a smaller side that I need to sew uh, when it's harder to handle is probably a better idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do a straight stitch across this um, once, and as I go across, because our quilts are different size, remember, so wherever we attached these points uh, for the baffles, the outside shell is an inch and a half bigger. So on each one of these baffles, we have to bite off uh, an inch and a half. And uh, I know I'm not using correct sewing, sewing lingo here when I say bite off, but hopefully you guys can see this. We have uh, our baffles here, and we have 5.5 inches here, which is gonna stay straight and flat, but we've got additional material on top. And so as I sew, I'm just going to pinch this about an inch and a half, just pinch, and just sew right over that. Um, and I'm just gonna do that a little bit on each baffle. And I'm not gonna measure it, um, to be honest with you. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it a little bit. Um, you should just pull up the slack in each one a little bit. It's really not a big deal um, because they're sewn in place. So once you kind of feel that getting a little tight, you're good to go and you can just sew right over it. Um, so let me show you that and uh, we're almost done. Okay, so remember that when we're doing this part, we have to have the outside or the underside um, facing up. So the side that has the extra fabric has to be facing up. Okay, so just a little pinch, probably about um, half inch or so pulled up and then fold it over. And like I said, you know, in a perfect world it'd be an inch and a half. And you guys might measure, but I am not the measuring type if I don't have to. So here we go. Just sew right over it. Perfect. And then just continue on to cross over into the next baffle. Stop right at the baffle seam and repeat the process of kind of the pinching and folding over. Like I said, if you're someone that wants uh, every little fold to be perfectly identical, then you're probably gonna wanna measure out that inch and a half difference on each one and make sure you're folding it that way. But honestly, it has no effect on the performance of the quilt. Um, so, you know, if you're off a quarter inch on one and you're you know, off quarter inch in there and you have to pull a little bit slack on the next one, it's really not a big deal. So. Uh, I don't worry about it. All right, so then the next thing to do is just to go ahead and do a rolled hem on this top edge. Okay, so we are, we are getting there. We are almost done with our quilt. Um, the time has come for us to stuff down and uh, the way that I like to do this, and there's, there's so many different ways and a lot of them involve tents that you go inside or bathtubs and stuff like that so you don't have the down go everywhere. Uh, but Franky, if you're familiar with his videos, I recommend you check him out. Great, great filmer, great video maker. Um, he has this way that he came up with and that's, I kind of like to flatten it out and then you just simply cut your package in half, find your opening, slide the opening end in there and then just let it, let it go, let it fly into there. Um, and I found that way to be really pretty good to work with. Um, 
So, here goes nothing. So you notice we'll just cut it right open, right across. Be delicate with it. And then carefully just set one aside. And you'll see it doesn't like just explode everywhere right away. And then you're gonna wanna cut the other end open. And then you can see I'm just kind of pushing it down into the quilt. And I'm really just kind of trying to push it down. And it's been a while since I've done this. As you go along, you kind of develop your technique, your, your little skill. I think last time I did it, I compressed it really, really hard and then kind of was able to force it in. Okay, so that's not too bad, a little messy. Let's put the other half in there. All right, great, so we've got kind of one baffle filled here. I am mean, making relatively a, a little bit of mess here. Anyways, I'm gonna just get some uh, clothespins here and just fold this over once or twice and clothespin it closed. Clothespins, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of low sticky, not, not terribly sticky, but uh, painter's tape, just roll it over and stick that on and that way that baffles. So I'm gonna shake this out and see how the one ounce fills this quilt up. Cause I used a down calculator uh, provided by a uh, member on Hammock Forums, I don't remember the name. And to be honest with you, I feel like uh, the one ounce maybe isn't quite enough. I might have to order a little bit more down. All right, so. Like I said, we've really come far today. Here's our underquilt and the uh, the status of it right now. Um, you can see that it's it is lofting pretty good. Let me come down here. Um, put my hand in there for scale. It's lofting pretty good throughout. Um, probably two to three inches of loft. Meh, three maybe four inches of loft. Um, but I really want those suckers to be full. Um, the calculator I used uh, to figure out the down for this said approximately one ounce per chamber, which I guess would get you there, but I'm gonna put this project on uh, pause uh, for a couple days. I'm gonna jump online, I'm gonna order three more ounces of down, so that would give me another half ounce per chamber, um, bringing our grand total to nine ounces of down for this under quilt and um, one and a half ounces per chamber, okay? Um, I'm disappointed I have to table it for a couple days, but for you guys, it's just gonna be a matter of seconds and a video transition, so um, check back, and uh, when you guys do, I'll probably have put the, the down in it. And you can see, you can see that instead of, uh, instead of clothes pins, which I couldn't find, I just have some like blue painter's tape on there holding the the opening shut for now so down doesn't escape. But she's gonna be a warm one for sure. Pretty excited. And here's a look at the edges of how this will fit up around the quilt, or excuse me, the hammock. It's gonna be nice. I just need a little bit more, a little more down in there. All right, so it's been a few days. I got my uh, three more ounces of down in the mail from Marty at Wilderness Logics. And I've already gone ahead and stuffed, just like I did before, um, but I stuffed the, uh, another half ounce in each of the six chambers um, to bring a total um, quality, or total, excuse me, quantity of um, down to nine ounces for the entire quilt. Um, and it's lofting really well now. 
I think it was just the right amount. So nine ounces is what uh, I recommend for this. If you wanted to, you could probably do uh, 10 ounces, but that doesn't kind of distribute evenly into the six chambers. So uh, nine ounces worked real well. Um, all we have to do now is uh, along this top edge, I'm gonna take the tape off and I'm just gonna do, uh, like we did on the other side to close it off, I'm gonna do a, a, a seam all along the top, uh, running uh, through the baffles uh, to close off everything. And then I'll probably run another seam to keep things together while I do my rolled hem at the top. Okay, so that's the next step. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, let's get to it. And remember, you guys can see me doing it here. Remember that uh, as we go, we need to make up that extra um, space that the outside shell has by doing a quick little fold in our fabric. So don't forget to do that as we go across. Essentially, we, our under quilt is done. It's nice and fluffy. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how this thing's turned out so far. Uh, one of the last steps we're going to do, just to finish this off, and you can skip this step if you really would like, uh, but I think it's just going to give it a nice finished look, and that is I'm going to take some 7 8 uh, or 1 inch grogan, and I'm just going to fold it over the edges and uh, just go around this with uh, and line the edges with uh, the grosgrain, just to kind of give it a nice uh, finished look. Um, and I think I'm just gonna start from one end and do each side, and then I'll do each cap. Um, so, should be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Just make sure that we're melting the ends uh, so that it doesn't fray. And then it should be as simple as uh, just getting this lined up. And uh, the hardest part here is going to be getting it started, I think. Uh, once we're started, it should feed pretty easily. And it's also important to note here, too, that our uh, underquilt suspension is not going to be like a typical underquilt uh, where the shock cord runs through the, uh, the channels on the side. So we don't need to worry about making any channels here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this. I'm going to do this side, the long one of the long sides. And I'm doing it alongside, and then I'll check back with you when we go to do the uh, the short ends. All right, so I'm almost done here with uh, one of the sides, and I just wanted to kind of, uh, it might seem obvious, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys are on the same page. And as I get to the end, I'm just working off the spool right now, um, so I don't have to measure a specific length. Um, but as I get to the end, I'm just going to measure this up and uh, cut off the excess to right where I need it to be. And just like that, it's the right length. And again, before we sew it, I'm gonna just melt the ends so it doesn't fray. And then we can continue and finish sewing our side. All right, so our quilt is really, really coming in to its own. It's looking really good. Um, I just need to repeat the same process that I did on the long sides, now on the short sides. Uh, so again, we're just going to take some more uh, 7 8 grill grain uh, ribbon and just fold it over. And I'm just going to do that along both the top and bottom short edges. Okay, so one of the last final steps is going to be cutting some more 1 inch or 7 8 grill grain uh, to 5 inches. And these are going to be the tie outs for the under quilt suspension. Uh, so we just need to measure out 5 inches. And cut and I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, four of those one for each corner uh, again after you cut just make sure you're going through and uh, sealing the edges of this so that it doesn't fray like I said four of these and uh, I'll check back with you guys all right so the next step uh, I thought it might be easier uh, to show you uh, one already finished before uh, actually just showing you myself sewing it so what we did was we took one of those um, five inch pieces of grain that we cut and I just folded it over the edge um, and sewed a box around and then double backstitched a line through. Uh, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be terribly strong uh, since it's just holding up our under quilt. Uh, and we did sew through two layers of fabric here and two layers of grain. so this is more than enough strong. Um, and this is just going to give us something to uh, run our suspension through uh, up to our 
um, Dutch hardware. Okay, and this is the head end. Um, and this is parts important. This is the head end. Um, both the head end uh, sides, I'm going to attach these at about a 45 degree angle. You can kind of see the angle there. Um, that's the angle this needs to be at to kind of correctly pull this uh, quilt up into our Dutch hardware. On the other side, um, towards the foot, because it's going to end um, right around our knees and still have a good amount of ways to go to get to the Dutch hardware, rather than this 45 degree angle, it's going to come off and go a lot more straight because that's the angle that the, uh, the shock cord is going to go to. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're attaching those at those approximate angles. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and uh, finish these up. So the last and final step is attaching um, some shock cord to our under quilt for the suspension. Um, and now how I'm approaching this, sorry, just melting the end there. How I'm approaching this uh, suspension um, is actually just going to be four straight lines, one from each corner to run up to the Dutch hardware. So for the, uh, the head end, we don't need very much. I'm going to grab that that's maybe a foot and a half, uh, which is more than enough. Uh, I haven't measured this, so um, all these are just rough estimates. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to give myself a little bit extra, um, and then uh, as I experiment with this, I'll be able to uh, figure out if there's excess that I can cut off, which I'm sure there will be. Okay, so again, just like everything else, uh, when you cut it, just make sure you're melting the ends so that it doesn't fray on you. Um, and then what I'm going to do is actually just make a loop and uh, tie that loop off and that way I can Lark's head this onto the underquilt. Let me show you. Alright, so we have a uh, head end here, head end corner. And I'm just going to thread this through and then put the line back in on itself. So just like that. And then we can pull this tight. Let me feed that through there. And then it's just Lark's head on, like that. Okay? Now for the foot end, uh, we need a lot more uh, line. Probably, I'm guessing, we'll end up needing somewhere in the three to four foot range. But just to play it safe, I'm going to grab about probably about almost six feet. Again, melt the ends. And uh, also I just want to reiterate that uh, this is excess shot cord. Um, and we will be trimming some off when we find out, when we dial this into exactly what we like. Um, so we're not carrying excess weight and shot cord. And I'll uh, annotate this video with how much I cut off um, so you guys know exactly how much you either need to buy or how much you need to cut. Alright, so we same process again, just stick it through, grab our other end. Just gonna pull it through, pull it tight. Simple as can be. We'll do the very last one now. 